All right, so we looked at uh, different videos, and you can further explore these on your own. Let's actually talk about creating a video. So uh, you should have gotten a copy of that folder from the network folder called YouTube Clip. I put it on my desktop. You can put it on your flash drive if you'd like. And we're going to use the software called Windows Movie Maker. So go to your Start menu. Click the Windows Start menu down there and start typing Movie Maker. And you should see a result. The first result should be Movie Maker. Click Movie Maker to start the software. You might get a pop-up about a service agreement, I guess. Click Accept on that. Does that come installed with the No, it might not come installed with, with Windows, especially the latest one, but you can get it as a free download from Microsoft.com. Guys over there, I know you're helping each other, but could you keep it down a little, please? So, um... Yeah, you can go to Microsoft.com and you can download it. On ours it is, but when you're at home, you'll need to download it. No, it's, a, it's desktop software. <clears throat> okay, so let's get a quick overview of what we've got here. This software, I'm going to maximize it. Uh, Movie Maker. This is like every other video editing software to various degrees. And honestly, video editing software is complex because you can do a lot with it. But this one is a good consumer level friendly editor, similar to iMovie. When you get something like Premiere or After Effects or what else, Final Cut Pro, Vegas, etc., that kind of software is much more complex. But as a quick overview, we've got on the left side this black box. This will show you a preview of the video as we're putting it together because a video is made out of one or more clips. Let's say I record a little bit of my face and then on the side. That's two clips that I recorded that I want to cut together, edit together. I will see those results in this black box here. I will also see a time code right here. If, I, if my video lasts one minute long, it'll say one, zero, zero, zero. One minute, zero seconds, zero milliseconds. So we can cut this down to the millisecond level. So at what position am I at my video in the full length of my video. I'll have an ability to play the video, rewind it, fast forward it, and even jump to different portions in the video by dragging this playhead. I can't do it because I don't have a video yet. We'll do that in a moment. But this is how I navigate back and forth throughout my video. I see it here. I can jump to different parts in the video. The video is going to be made out of clips, and they're going to be listed all here on the right side. Click here to browse for videos and photos. So I can add just about any kind of video format, just about any kind of audio format, and picture format. We'll add those in a moment. On the top, we're going to see various tabs. Uh, this one up here probably has a name, but this is where you go up here to make a new project, open, save, publish, import, all of that stuff, options. In this part here, the only thing we, we really need to care about is saving. We'll do that in a moment. Uh, but then we've got home, animations, visual effects, project, and view. Different things that we can do to our video. Home screen, we can cut and copy. We can cut and copy pieces of our video clips. We can add more video clips. That's the same if you click here. That's the same as clicking over here add video or pictures, I can add music, I can, if I've got a web camera, I can record straight into Movie Maker here. I can do narration, so what if I put together a video based on photos and I want to talk about the photos? I can turn this on and record my audio. That assumes I've got some sort of microphone. As I said, I've got this web camera that I use for that. My laptop has a built-in microphone. That might be good enough. I might go buy another, you know, $100 microphone. But I can record at the same time. Uh, snapshot, don't worry about that just yet. And then text. I can add a title, text before the movie. So some sort of 
name that appears before the movie, I can do that. I can do credits at the end of the movie. So just like a real movie where the credits scroll up or they fade in or whatever, I can add text at the end. And as the video goes on, I can add text anywhere I want in the video. That's with caption. Notice a lot of these are not on because I, I don't have any video, I don't have any content to work with yet. <clears throat> we have auto we have auto movie, which will allow us to quickly put like a style to our videos. Usually I don't do anything with these because it, it's going to make your movie look exactly the same as someone else's movie. If I can choose this style of movie, so can someone else. So usually we're using the default one right here, which is, you know, blank default. Let me make the movie how I want. We have other editing things like, I no longer need this clip. It actually is my mistake. I'm going to remove it so it won't be part of my video anymore. I can select. I can rotate. So if I shot my video, you know, one of the big mistakes is, uh, people record video with their phone standing up. You want to record horizontal because our monitors are horizontal. All of these video clips that I showed you are horizontal. They fill the screen. When you've got a vertical video, you're going to have empty space on the left and right. It's going to look weird with one column of video and empty black on the left and right. If you recorded it vertically on accident, you can rotate it. But get in the habit of recording horizontal on your mobile device, not vertical. It's a, it's a waste of the space. We can share directly to Facebook and YouTube and so forth. We can save it and sign in. Don't worry about that. So home screen is where you do most of the big things. Animations. Once we add a video clip, we'll be able to do animations, also known as transitions, where you've got this clip and this clip, and you want to fade them together. So instead of just this one suddenly appearing after this one, you can do a nice fade between them. You've got plenty to work with right here, some really weird ones. And I'll show you the three that I recommend. It gives you like 20 of them, but they're like amateur. They're like cross effects and triangles moving in and pixels and like weird things. You don't really see that on real videos. I'll show you the three that I recommend, but you could use any of them that you want, of course. Uh, we can do panning and zooming. That's that text. I mean, that's that video effect where you have a still photo, and instead of just showing you a photo, you can have the photo move into view or move out, like the documentaries. You see all these documentaries with Civil War era photos, and they move gently across the screen and such. We can do that as well here, pan and zoom. Like that tomato. The tomato that we just saw earlier. It was a still photo, but it moved a little bit with one of these effects. So um, visual effects over here, you can add some black and white effect, blur, and all of that. I usually don't use these that much. They're not as useful as you might think. You can do that here if you'd like sepia tone, that sort of thing. What is useful on this screen though is you can brighten your videos a bit. It's not going to magically make it look like you added you know, a spotlight to someone, but it will brighten it up to some degree. That's visual effect. Project, we don't do very much here at all, except most likely to select this emphasized video. What this is about is I can have narration that I record, I can have audio in my video, and I can add music to my video. Three sounds fighting with each other. One might be louder than the other. My music might be so loud I can't hear my voice. So here it's saying by default, any narration will take over the other sounds. You'll still hear the other sounds, but narration will be louder. Usually, we're going to have it on emphasize video. So let's go ahead and do this before we forget. Go to Project go to emphasize video. I'm gonna record video and I'm gonna talk and I want that audio attached to my video to be higher than the other audio. I'm gonna add music, a music bed, I'm gonna add music behind everything but I don't want that music to overwhelm my voice so I would want emphasize video in this case. Or no emphasis. And you can mix it here, audio mix. We can't do anything, we don't have any audio but right here. And then this other stuff here, don't worry, you want a widescreen video, we're in the year 2016, no one uses standard anymore. Uh, 
So that's the only really change we have to do there. View will allow us to zoom in and zoom out. We can zoom in down to the second. So I'm speaking, I need to cut out two seconds of a mistake. I can zoom in to that and delete it. Uh, these others are just other ways to view our videos. We'll look at those. And so these are, the, these are these editing tabs, but there are more editing tabs that will appear depending on what you've got selected. Because we're going to have video clips, we're going to have sound clips, we're going to have text clips, we're going to have um, photo clips. So depending on what I've selected over here, I might have another tab. I'll have a brand new video tab with its own specific settings for the video, its own audio tab. So we'll see those tabs, they will appear when necessary. At the moment, we need at least one video clip, so what we can do is either click on click here or back on the home screen, click add video. The home tab, add video. And uh, you need to find your folder. I've got mine on the desktop. You might have put it on your flash drive or elsewhere, but I'm going to go to the YouTube folder. And we only need to select the movie clip, not the finished, pres not the finished result we're going to need to select the movie clip one. Select it and then click open. It's going to process it, it's going to look at it, scan the audio and video, it's going to put it up there, just wait a moment. If you have headphones, um, you should plug them in. Uh, on your tower, you've got a, you've got a uh, a green plug down there. If you've got headphones, you can click, I mean, you can plug in there and hear this, but if you can't hear it, that's okay. I'm going to have my audio playing here. Yes? How did you get that? You go back to the home screen, you click on Add Videos, and then you find the video. Thank you. So did everyone get a chance to get that video clip loaded? Let's save our work so far. Uh, this is our work in progress. We're not done with it. We have a lot to do with it here, but I'm going to save this in case, you know, in case the power goes out. I want to save this. Um, go back to that. Uh, I'm sure it has a name, but click on the blue tab, let's say, and then select Save Project As. We have our work in progress file, and we have our finished file. The finished file is what we're going to upload to YouTube eventually, but this is our work in progress. <coughs> Click the blue tab up there and then select Save Project As. And then I'm going to select to save this on my video folder of YouTube clip. I'm just going to call this Review. And then we'll save it. So I'm just saving this as review. I'm saving this as my review project. I can change this name if I want later, uh, but let's just click Save right there. <coughs> so what I get here now is something that I can work with. If I click the Play button here... Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos for the Tech Review Tuesday. Today I've got some new... So I get my video in place here, it tells me I'm at 7 seconds, 67 milliseconds, out of 1 minute, 27 seconds, 42 milliseconds. I can fast forward and rewind here with this playhead, so I can jump to different portions of the video. I can press play at that point. Um, so this device is very good because it's... So I've got this video that I can work with. 
and as I go across the different as I go across the different uh, parts of the video here, do you notice also this playhead moves as well, this black line. This is my whole video and I can jump to different portions of the video. I can also try this, drag that playhead, you might see it at the beginning here, drag it over and notice I can jump to different parts of my video. If I put my playhead right there, that's at 44 seconds. So I can drag this to different parts of the video. If I click somewhere on the video, the playhead jumps to that, par to that part. And so I can have any length of video that I want here. Like I said, uh, I've uploaded a video to YouTube that was three hours long. That was me putting together a bunch of like 20 minute long videos. And then I edited it together, I uploaded it to video. I uploaded it to YouTube. Now to to uh, be effective here, we need to be able to zoom in and zoom out because I might be saying something and I might flub my words and I want to cut out the mistake. I need to zoom in to where the mistake is and cut that out. So on the bottom right corner, we have the zoom slider. If you drag that to the right, notice how the clip seems to get longer. It's not getting longer, it's just that we're zooming in. If you drag it all the way to the right or to the left, notice we're zooming in and out. If you drag it all the way to the right, every one of these little squares is one second. One second, two seconds, three seconds. If I'm zoomed in, like in the center somewhere, every time I jump between a clip, I mean a portion of the clip, here it jumped me over to six seconds. So at this zoom level, every, every, you know, every box is six seconds or so. I usually am zoomed in all the way to one second here so that I can see everything one second at a time. Yes? Um, I'm not seeing planes. I click on and I move the, the playhead to something. The changes on the screen here on the uh, edited preview, but all I've got is your same face on there, just like you have it. So you don't see that there, right? Yes, exactly. You see what I see, which is this one clip here. That was the first frame of that clip, so that's all that it shows you. It doesn't show you everything that you look at. So if I'm over here, it's not going to show it there. Uh, other software might do that. This software just shows you one little preview for the whole clip. So you that's kind of annoying because I can't tell where I'm clicking until I click it. Right, it makes it sort of hard to... Um, there must be a way to do your edits, though, so you can see. No. No, that you could edit with that. With that, res with that restriction. You will not be able to see in the clip what it actually looks like until you click there. Okay. Other software does do that. <clears throat> but let's go ahead and zoom in all the way to 100. So just drag that playhead there all the way to the... I mean, not the playhead, but that, that slider all the way to the right. And the point of that is, do you see all of these sort of like little mountains, all of this stuff here? That's known as the wave form. That's a visual representation of what I'm saying. So notice there's a little spike right here. And what happened there is I clapped. See that? That spike is a spike in audio. I clapped and I can see it in the, in the timeline over here. So as I, I start to speak over here, hello everyone, this is Victor Campos. I start to speak where this little mountain happens. So anywhere where you see that, that's the waveform, that's me speaking. So for example, there's a big stretch of time over here where there's nothing happening. No, no audio. So if I view it, take a look why. There I am trying, I'm fumbling with my phone, I'm, I'm trying to unlock it. I need to cut that out. We'll get to that eventually. We're just still getting acclimated with this. Jumping with to different points in time here in the timeline. <clears throat> Jumps the playhead over and it also shows me the time here. And it shows me on my preview right there. So I can drag this to different portions. 
now that I've got some sort of clip, some sort of video to work with, now all of these options have activated. I can record narration, I can do all of this stuff. For example, don't click on it, but put your mouse over. Well, let's first go back to the Home tab, if you're not there already. And don't click on it, but put your mouse over on the Auto Movie. Put your mouse over on the second item there. And notice what it does is it says, okay, you're about to get this sort of animation. Then your video starts. Hello, everyone. This See that? I can put my mouse over the third type of movie theme. I get that Hello, effect. Everyone. About this one. I get that. So I haven't clicked on them. I'm getting a preview out of these by putting my mouse over it. So we can edit that to some degree, but we can't edit the color and the and the speed and any of that stuff. So that's what I'm saying. I usually don't do these auto movie themes because everyone else can do them and they'll all look the same. The default that is selected is default. I can rotate the video, all of that stuff. So let's first start off by adding a little bit of text before my, uh, my video. It just starts off. I want some sort of introductory text or animation or something. This is where this software does lack a bit in really making uh, some of these logos and such. Maybe I want my company logo to appear first and then my video. What I would need to do is design the logo in Photoshop or some other graphic software and then add the photo to my video. I don't have one for you. We're not going to bother with that. But if I went over on Photoshop and made a really cool graphic, I could then import it. I can add it to my video here. The way we will do it is with the title. This text, we can use text. We can use any font. So let's try this. Let's click on Title. I'm on the Home tab. Click on Title. It switches over now. Notice we have a new tab, the Text tab. <clears throat> so depending on what we're working with, we get different tabs. This is the Text Tool tab. And here now I have the ability to copy and paste text, change fonts and colors, transparency, alignment, um, color of the background, how long does the text last, and then an effect for the text. This is a review. But I'm going to say this is our, let's say this is the, I'm going to do every week a short video reviewing something. Let's say this is victorstechnology.com. And every week I'm going to re review a, some sort of technology. So I'm going to call this Tech Review Tuesday Moto E. I'm reviewing the Moto E. This can be anything you want. Don't stress if you didn't type exactly what I typed just showing you text. This box here can be moved. So if I grab the edge of the box, I can move the text to different parts of my video. I can make the box bigger. Maybe I want to make it bigger so that it says Tech Review Tuesday on one line. I want to maybe put it right in the center. Maybe I want to increase the size. I can change size up here or click this up or down size. I can change the font. Make it bold. Change the color of the font. I can change a background color. Notice there's a button right there, background color. So instead of a plain black background, I can choose a nice blue one or whatever. Edit the text. I can align it. So that's obviously terrible color choices, but they're my choices. Um, I can um, add these effects. Notice again, if you if you hover your mouse, don't click on them yet, but if you hover your mouse over an effect, this will fade it in like that. That's kind of nice. I could do it like this. It zooms in. I could do really fancy if I do that one. Look at that cinematic. Um, I have these other ones I can choose like that. 
So I haven't clicked on them, I've just hovered my mouse over them to select, to see, to preview what they look like. And I have more to choose from. I've got an up arrow, I've got a down arrow. So if I click down, I've got a few others to, to possibly choose. there's a lot of customization that I can do here. A font, a color, sizes. So here, take a moment to experiment with this. Um, <clears throat> write something, add some text, maybe an effect, and you'll see that now before my video, you see this, these sprocket holes here, this just shows, this is like a, this is like a film clip, right? The my film clip starts here, and before it, I've got now some text. I've got some text with a blue background. And I've got a new track. I've got a video track. I've got a text track. The text exists as its own layer. So now if I just one moment, if I click on the video, all of the things that I can do about the video are accessible. If I click on the text, all of the things about the text are accessible. Question? The text that you choose thing, that's actually the title that was on the frame, right? And what kind of message you'll be in the video? It might depend on the size of this box. You know, if this box is too small, it cuts it off. So try to, if it's cutting off. Uh, in your example, you had model B, and it's not showing on the top one. Yeah, it's showing right there. I don't want it on the top line. I do want it on separate lines. In my case, Tech Review Tuesday is on the top line, and Moto E on the second. If it doesn't fit on the same line, your text is too big. You're gonna have to shrink your text a little bit, and then it'll fit on one line. But then I think it's too small. Let's try this a moment. Add some text, maybe choose a font or whatever. Make something that looks nice. And you can put this text anywhere in the video? Well, because we chose on the home screen, because we chose title, it goes at the front. And if we choose credits, it goes at the end. But if we want text anywhere in between, we choose caption. And we'll do that a little later. So now, if I, if I bring my playhead back to the beginning and press play, now I've got some text that fades in with a color, it lasts there a little while, and then it changes to be me, and then it starts. Hello everyone, this is so some text before my video. This software has a lot of shortcuts and I recommend to learn them as soon as possible because it's going to be annoying that when I've got my mouse over here and then I'm going to move my mouse way over here to press play and go back here and then press play the here and me. press here and here. There's a shortcut to, to play quickly which is the space bar. Notice it says press here or press the space bar. Many of these things will have some sort of keyboard shortcut and I'll list them as we go on. But remember, if you press space bar, it'll play your video. But to compass for the tech review, it'll pause your video. That might be Tuesday. faster to work with than pressing the play button here. Over. <laughs> Question? Yeah, this is the title and when the video starts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you notice that there's maybe too much of a gap, you're saying like here, that, that emptiness? Or are you saying before my face? Yeah. When you play uh, over here, let me see what you're seeing exactly, but we're going to, I'm going to talk about various things, of course, but let's see what exactly you're seeing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Every time you click on title or caption, it's going to do a new commitment. Go ahead and click on uh, this. First of all, tell me that. Okay, space bar. And go scroll back to the title. Uh, click on one of them that you don't want. So click on your name, for example. So I've added some text here, but maybe it's there for too long. Maybe, maybe I don't want to see that. You know, I'm looking at it. Okay, it's taking a while. I get the idea. Let the video start. Taking too long. You're going to be able to edit the length of audio, the length of video, the length of text. So let's say I click to select the text. It's selected because it got a box around it. If I click on my, my clip where I'm talking, it gets a box. If I click on that blue background, it gets a box. So you get used to selecting the appropriate track. This color track, this text track, this video track. As you select a track or an object, it gives you different tabs. If I select a video, it gives me tools about the video. If I select the text, it gives me tools about the text. If I select the blue, it gives me tools under video. So all of these are selectable and editable. So the point of that is, this text and the blue is happening too long. Let's click on the blue track, the, the, you know, the blue color, or whatever your color is. Click on that and click Video Tools, Tab. The duration of this is seven seconds. It's lasting too long. I'm waiting seven whole seconds before the video starts. So here we can easily say, okay, let this last two seconds. And notice it cut it down here. It's, it's no longer that long. That's seven seconds there. That's two seconds. If I play it, Touch re uh, Tech Review Tuesday mode, Maybe it's too short now. So you can decide what's a good length. You can go up to 30 seconds. Actually, you've got one second, two second, three second, four, five. You've got seconds, but what if I wanted 13 seconds? There's no 13 seconds. You can type any amount of time that you want here. Now it's 13 seconds. You have to decide how long to, to make this, but here's a, here's a rule of thumb with text. Um, the problem with when we work with this is um, we, we don't think about things in terms of the viewer. In my mind, this video is amazing. In my mind, it's long enough. In my mind, it's working. But in someone else's mind, when they see it, it's wrong. So think about it in terms of other people. So here's an example. I don't know how long to make Tech Review Tuesday. I think it's way too long, seven seconds. I'm going to cut it three, to three seconds. Try to read the text out loud, comfortably, three times, and that will give you an idea of how long it is. So I'm going to try right now. I'm going to back up. Tech Review Tuesday, Moto E. Tech Review Tuesday, I barely got through one and a half reads. Because I know what that says. I wrote it. But someone else that's going to look at it for the first time needs to adjust. Oh, something appeared. Oh, I need to read it. What is it saying? And time's up. So if you read it out loud, comfortably, two or three times, then it's a good length of text. If you can't read it out loud comfortably, make it longer. If you can read it, you know, six times comfortably, then it's too long, isn't it? So let me see here. Maybe, maybe five seconds. Let's see. Tech Review Tuesday, Moto E. Tech Review Tuesday, Moto E. Tech Review Tuesday, Moto E. Good. This is subjective. That might be too long for you. Cut it to whatever you'd like. But try reading it out loud to get the best effect. For all text. Because when we're going to do in a little while also, I'm going to say the name of the, of the phone while I'm speaking. And I want that to appear because now a person has to deal with looking at me and the text. And if I do it too quickly, they're going to miss one of the two. So I still also want that when we, when we have a caption. Now, 
again, this is complicated software. We're not going to become a pro in three and a half hours, in three hours. But this video is being recorded. You can watch it as many times as you want, remember. Uh, and uh, I'll try to be as helpful as possible, but I'm not going to be able to show you everything about it. I'm focused on creating this video. So uh, hopefully we can stay on track. Uh, speaking of tracks, again, uh, we have different tracks to deal with. Uh, if something is not doing what you think, make sure the track that, you're th that you want to work with is selected. Right now, my text appears, and then there's me clapping for some reason, and then I start to talk. Hello, everyone. The point of this is I want to cut out parts of the video. I want to cut that part out there. I want it to start when I actually start talking. Hello, everyone. This is So there's a couple seconds I need to cut out. If you're zoomed in all the way to the right, remember, each one of these boxes is one second. I've got about one, two three seconds, approximately, before I start talking. I want to cut out a little bit. Maybe I want to start right here. That's where I actually want to start my video. So move your playhead, and if, if yours is not exactly the same as mine, again, don't worry, but try to do it as close as possible. On my video, at approximately 7 seconds, 50 milliseconds, you know, it's somewhere here, and you can guide yourself by my voice. Eventually my voice starts right there. So somewhere a little bit before my voice. In my case 7.50 approximately. Around there, that's where I want to start my video. My actual my actual visible clip. So on that spot right there, right click and select set start point. What that does is it cuts out everything in that video clip before my playhead. So it's going to cut out the silence and my clap. Right click, set start point, and then now the result is I have text, and then right away, hello everyone, I start to talk. I don't have that emptiness. So basically, put your playhead where you want to cut something out, right click, set start point. That cuts out from that point behind. Now we have to be careful. This is not the only way to do this. I'm going to show a couple ways. Because what this does is it cuts out everything before that. So if I go over here to 22 seconds and I made a mistake here and I do right click set start point, I cut out all those 22 seconds. I'm in this device and let's take. So this that I just showed you is not the way to cut out something in the middle. We'll do that in a moment. What I mean is, I'm saying, I'm reviewing the Samsung, I mean, I'm reviewing the Motorola, blah, blah, blah. I want to cut out that part that I said Samsung. I want to cut out a piece in the middle of two clips. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But this one about right click, set start point, cuts out everything beforehand. Now my text segues into, Hello everyone, this is something meaningful. You might say, too abrupt, suddenly I appear. Can I do a cool fade or something like that? Of course we can. Let's do that right now. We're going to add a fade, a, a blur, a blend between the text clip and the video clip. What you need to do is you need to select the second item. This is the first item, second item. It's going to blur, it's going to blend from here to here. You have to select the second thing and then the two will blend. If I select this one, this will blend with it and what's before it, which is nothing. You need to select the thing after you're going to blend with the current thing. It's confusing, but you'll get used to it when we do it more. But I want to blur this one with this one, so select this one. Click it. Make sure it's blue and highlighted. That's selected. Go up to the Animations tab, and this is what I'm saying about all of these animations. Don't click them, just hover your mouse over this first triangle one. Hello, everyone, and this. Look at that. Hello, everyone, and this. Or this one. Hello, everyone, or this one. Hello, everyone, which are all totally amateur. I'm going to mute myself for a moment. Um, you have more than one down here. If you scroll down, you've got this effect over here. Hello, everyone, and this is. That. 
the three that I recommend, that are the professional ones, the ones that you see most commonly, unfortunately, are on the second row. I, I hate this because I always have to scroll to the second row, even though it's the one I use all the time. What I mean here, if you scroll down, second row, third row, whatever, you can do a heart. Hello, everyone. Reason. Hello, everyone. Is this... Uh, but yeah, if... <laughs> I wish. The second row has these three ones right here. If you hover your mouse, it tells you what they're called. What are they called? This white one is... Hello, everyone. Blur. This... This next one is... Hello, everyone. Blur this... through black. And then we've got this third one. Hello, everyone. Crossfade. This... These are the three that I use most often. Hello, These are everyone. The ones that you've seen most often. Look at that blur. Hello, everyone. There. This... That one Hello everyone. From this black and that one. Hello everyone. Just a this way. Everything else is interesting. Hello everyone. But really, does that look professional? Hello everyone. Right? This is. Does that look professional? Hello everyone. This you never see that on professional videos. You see one of these three, and it's on the second row Hello, everyone. of transitions. I wish they would put it on the first row because I use those all the time, and you probably will also. So I'm going to select one of them. Crossfade, let's say. I will actually click it now. Hello everyone. And what this happens is it does like a like a ramp, like a triangle in the timeline, and that's to represent this clip here is slowly going away, and this other clip is slowly appearing. That's what that triangle there is trying to show. Out with the old, in with the new. For this amount of time. The blur happens. The transition happens as I'm starting to talk. Let me play it again. Hello everyone, this is Victor. So I'm getting the result of two clips fading together. Good. But I'm not quite liking it. I want the text to go away before I start to talk. This is the part about that editing, that it takes time and effort. Because right now, this crossfade animation Hello everyone. This is taking 1.5 seconds. It's from here to here, one and a half seconds. I want the animation to finish before I start talking. So maybe I need less duration. What about one quarter of a second? So now look at this. It goes from here to here quickly. And then I can talk. Well, I have to see what it looks like if I like it. You have that under text tools? Hello, everyone. Nope, this is not text. This is an animation. You have to have your text, you have to have your picture, you have to have the video selected, and you'll have uh, animations. So with one quarter of a second, it's too short, maybe half a second. This is all subjective. Again, I can show you the tools. But what's a good video? You will decide. Hello everyone, this is Victor. Hello everyone. So I kind of like half a second instead of one and a half seconds. You might like more, you might like less. It's up to you. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos for the Tech Review Tuesday. Today I've got some new hardware for you. This is the Motorola Moto E. It's one of the newest... So I mentioned the device. I would like it on screen to also say the name of the device. So somewhere here, o -E -A Moto -E, I start to say the name of the device. In my case, it's at approximately right here, which is at approximately 12.8 seconds. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't show you here on the clip what I'm actually doing. It would be nice, but there's, it just doesn't do it, unfortunately. Thumbnail size, extra large. For the, yeah, price, of For the price of admission, that's a very good price, but there is that limitation. That's why you want your, your headphones. But trust me, at approximately 1280, at approximately between these two peaks of voice here, you know, if I if I move my playhead around, Rola Moto E. So I'm starting to say uh, Moto somewhere around 12 seconds. At that point, I want more text to appear. In that case, now, this is where, on the Home tab, I will use a caption. The caption lets you add text wherever you've selected with the playhead. So let's try that. 
somewhere at around 12.8 seconds. If I click Caption, text appears, and it's going to appear below me. Motorola Moto E. And I can change the font and the size and the alignment and the duration. That's going to go for text duration 7 seconds. That may be too short, that may be too long. But you have the ability to edit that. The Motorola Moto E, it's one of the newest devices running Android. Seven seconds is a bit long. That uh, advice that I said about read it aloud three times, it still holds, but it also should adhere to how long does it need to be displayed on, on screen. The Motorola Moto E, it's one of the newest devices. So notice how we can quickly get complex here. We've got a, a text track and one back there and a video track and so forth. We get more complex in a bit. So again, be careful to make sure that you click what you think you're working with. Click the text and you'll get the tab. Notice this is a pink track, so you have a pink tab up there. Um, you have you click the you get the you click the the video itself, the video track, and then you get a video tab. You should have colored it blue instead of yellow, uh, but you get you get a different tab, and you have to be careful to make sure. I'm seeing both video and text track uh, tabs, but I've got the video tab selected there, text selected there, so be mindful of that. Did you click first to add a caption? Title is what happens, is the text that happens before the video. Credits is what happens after the video. And captions is any text we add in between the video. With the text track selected and the text tab selected, again, I can do various things with it size, font, etc., animation. Right now, the text will just suddenly appear. What if I select this Moto. animation? Let me mute myself. Uh, if I if I have that one right Moto. there, notice the text fades in Moto. and then fades out. What about that one? It uh, Moto. stretches into view. This one Moto. does this. This one Moto. does that. You have a few different Moto. text uh, animations, whichever looks good to you. Usually uh, a good nice looking you know professional conservative one is Moto. the second one here faded in all right the text fades Moto. in nicely i like also this one about Moto. you know moving in from the edge of the screen Moto. that'll catch people's attention Moto. more i believe suddenly something moved on screen let me read it Moto. so it's the what's the official name Moto. fly in right and fly in Moto. left if you hover your mouse over these things, it gives you a name and it previews the effect. I'm going to do fly in right. Moto. And now the result is that as I'm Motorola, speaking, then Moto this e, comes into view. It's one of the newest devices away. running Android. Let's go ahead and save. We've been doing a lot of good work, so uh, you can just click on that little save icon on the top left, that little floppy disk. That's the fastest way. Or you can go back to this uh, blue tab and click Save Project. We're still. This is still our work in progress. It saves it as a WLMP file. All right, you have text files, Word files, Windows Movie Maker projects. Just save it. We're not done yet. Eventually, what we're going to do is, um, you know, save it as a movie. But right now, we're saving as a project. So let's see what else we can we need to do with this video. Can you alter the like if you're bringing the text in from the left? Can you alter the speed? It seems like it goes pretty fast. I 
think so. We that's tied to. It's not. It's um, I've got the text selected, and then in the text tab, there's no duration. But the way duration, there's no duration. How you think there is text duration, and if it's taking too, if it's going too fast, it means that your text duration is too slow. So if you change text duration to a little longer, let's say five seconds. Let's see. Motorola Moto E. No, actually, that does zoom in kind of fast. It seems to be built into that speed. You can't do too much about that. Okay. Motorola Moto E. It's one of the newest devices running Android. So I highly recommend this device. And let's take a look why. Okay, so here's definitely a part that I need to do some editing. Um, I believe edit is from the Latin term to eat. So editors in a magazine are eating your words. Makes sense now, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We're going to edit this video. And here's what's going on. I start to talk about the device, and then I fumble with unlocking it and such. Boring. Cut that out, which we will. So this is what I'm talking about here. So... I highly recommend this device, and let's take a look why. I want to cut out all of this part here where I'm unlocking it. All right, so now that I've unlocked it, um, so this device is... I also want to cut out the part that I said I unlocked it. So I've got a lot that I want to cut out. In this case, I want to cut out something in the middle. It won't help us to do the right click, set start point. We want to cut it. Uh, in the middle. We do have the option right-click split, but let's not do that. I don't like that result too well. In theory, what that's supposed to do is it's supposed to... Uh, no, wait, sorry, that is what we do want. We do want split. I'm thinking of something else. Don't worry what I was saying. Here's how we're going to do it. We need to split the clip to remove the part we don't want. So let me show you first. So everyone watch this for a moment. Everyone watch this for a moment, and then I'll show you what, it, what I did. At this point, I'm going to split it. And then at this point, I'm going to split it. And now, in the middle, I'm going to delete that. And what I get is... This device, and let's take a look why. So this device... See that? I cut out a bunch of time in the middle by splitting it. Let's do it together. But the big idea is I'm splitting where I want to start to remove, and then I'm splitting where I've done where I'm done removing, and then in the middle I remove it. So guide yourself by looking for the spot the spot where I'm done talking, which is at approximately 22 seconds. At about 22 seconds, right click, split. And now I get two clips. This clip here, this clip here. This is a clip, this is a clip. They're both different, they're both differently selectable, they're both differently editable. Notice the sprocket holes of the you know, camera film. This clip goes on and ends right there. Then this clip starts new, right there, where I split it. There's all of this stuff that I don't need here. Every time you split a clip, it does change the thumbnail. That's still not that useful. And so there's going to be a part where I start talking again. Right, so now that I've unlocked it, I don't want to say that I unlocked it. I want to start. Um, I want to cut up my um. So I'm going to start on so. It's at approximately somewhere around 31.7 seconds. Because I said over here, now that I've unlocked it, um, so... So somewhere here, before I start talking for real, I'm going to split it again. Right click, split. So I had one clip when we started. Now we've got three. The first 20 seconds, this 10 seconds of junk, and then the, the next clip and then the rest of the video. So one clip, two clip, three clip. They're all indicated by the, by the sprocket holes. This is a good part. 
This is a good part in the middle of the bad part. So in the middle clip, you know, select the middle clip. You can then right click, remove, or simply press delete on the keyboard. So this is the first part of it. This is the middle part, which is bad. This is the next part, which is good. So in the middle, you should see that the blue starts here and ends here. Right click that and remove. So now if I back up and press play this device and let's take a look why. So this device is very there you go, I took out all the bad part. This device and let's take a look why. So this, this device and let's take a look why. So this question. Is this a software have to undo? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I guess we all were going to At the top left corner, at the top left corner, we have this back arrow here, which undoes. And it's still also the classic control Z, like any other software. So we have undo and we have redo. So just that backwards arrow. So if I press that, it took it back. And then if I press forward, it does it again. Now the good thing about all of these edits that we're doing is that they are non-destructive. What that means is that my original clip still has everything. My original clip in the folder still has everything, my mistakes, everything. These edits are being saved in that project file. They're not editing the original video. And nowadays, pretty much every video software is non-destructive. But I remember doing this for years. And the old versions, if you deleted something in the project, you deleted it in the original video. And if you didn't have a backup of that, you lost it. Now this thing, I can make as many edits as I want and cut it down to 10 seconds where my original one minute video clip is still perfectly intact. So I know that was tricky. Anyone need any help to get that working? This device and let's take a look why. So you split your clip and then you delete what you don't need. show you a real-world example of what we just did digitally. Here's our video clip. You know, five seconds. We did a split, then we did another split, we got rid of this one, and we were left with these two. That's what we just did. But the original video is still intact, and I can't do that with real paper. But uh, now we've only got those two clips, and they just run into each other. They maybe run into each other too abruptly. It's like this one suddenly appears into that one, doesn't it? This device, and let's take a look why. I'm holding the phone a certain way, and then suddenly I'm holding it another way. This may or may not matter to you. This is part of the artistic aspect of this. This is a, this is a hard cut. Suddenly something happens here, cut to suddenly that. A soft cut would be, what about adding an animation? But if I select the second clip, I go to animations, and then I add, you know, an effect like and this. I recommend this device, and let's so take a look why. This device is very good so because that's a soft cut. I recommend this device, and let's take so a look why. This device is very. The problem, of course, is it takes too long. Uh, that's something to further experiment with. So you can try this. You've got your first clip, you've got your second clip, click on the second clip and go to the Animations tab and choose an animation. Remember, I'm recommending one of these three professionals. And let's see so why. This device is... And let's see so why. This, device this one definitely I'm going to need so to select a small amount of duration time. This is optional. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to. But the point of this is that now if you look so here... Why? So this device is very good animation it's between the very two. That is completely subjective if that's good or not. You saw in the commercial that we made for the Italian food restaurant, they were all hard cuts. Look at the food here, look at the food here, look at the food here between them. They didn't really fade between each other. It worked fine for that video. 
it would have been fine or better or worse if we did blurs, fades between each shot. It's just up to you how you want to shoot that, how to edit it, that is. I'm in this device and let's take a look why. So this device... That's fine. This is very good because it's very powerful. It has all the particular apps that we might need. It uh, lets you do social media. It lets you do uh, instant messaging. It's got a 20 megapixel camera. It has everything that you... If we wanted to, we could be listing what I'm saying on a screen as I say it. If you want to play with that, you can do so. Like when I say 20 megapixel camera. Uh, instant messaging. It's got a 20 megapixel... So when I say 20 megapixel camera, I could go back to home and add a caption at that point. I'm not going to do it, but you could if you want to. Again, with caption, you can add text anywhere as the video goes on. 20 megapixel. Um, how do you... Just drag it. Yeah, so if I add caption and then just grab that box and drag it to the corner. You might have to shrink the box, but you can add your caption text anywhere you want. A 20 meg. And that's how you corrected yourself to misspoke. On that one, um, you can add uh, text and captions and such in your video editor, and you can also add them in YouTube. So by the time I figured that out, it was already uploaded to YouTube and had gotten views. And if I were to have wanted to change that, I would have to delete that version of the video and upload it again, and I'd lose my views. So I added the caption in YouTube, and we'll see how to do that also. Instant messaging. It's got a 20 megapixel camera. It has everything that you need, so... Let's uh, let's take a break and we'll come back to do more editing because um, we're we're going to um, actually create this video to completion. But uh, we've done some good amount of work so far. It's 11:52. Let's take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 12:02, and we'll we'll keep doing this.